I've spent pretty much the last week just talking football with, in my mind, probably the smartest guys in the industry, people that are way smarter than me, Brett Coleman, Josh Norris, the, the entire underdog crew in Arizona. And they had a pretty consensus statement, especially Coleman, that Zay Flowers was the number one wide receiver in this draft class, that Zay Flowers is going to be the first guy off the board in the NFL draft, that Zay Flowers the guy that we wanted to be looking at. And up until that point, I honestly hadn't given much thought to Zay Flowers. Had him as the wide receiver four in this draft class. But whenever we have people that are significantly smarter than I am saying, Mason, you got to take a look at this guy. You got to dive a little bit deeper. I figured let's revisit this profile. Let's look at the floor ceiling case for Zay Flowers. Let's look at the best potential landing spots that he can find himself in because everybody around the Super Bowl was uh, pretty much in consensus that Flowers was going to be a first round NFL draft pick. But I think that's all I got for this intro. Of course, drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you play Dynasty. If you want to get in a draft with us, make sure you sign up for Underdog Fantasy. Use promo code FLOCK and they'll match your first deposit dollar for dollar up 200 and you'll get our 2023 Dynasty rankings. Link in the description and in the comment section. But that should be about it. So let's go through. Let's look at Zay Flowers starting off as a high school recruit. And obviously, he's not a five-star guy. Okay, if he was a five-star guy, we'd be seeing, seeing him come out of Georgia, Alabama, LSU, Ohio State. I think you already know he comes out of Boston College. He's a three-star player, not much pedigree at all. And I'm sorry if you've already heard me tell this story a million times, but if y'all don't know, uh, about five years ago at this point, I took a biostatistics class at UT, did an entire semester-long research report where I was supposed to be looking at things that actually mattered, looking at vaccine data, blah, blah, blah. And I looked at how high school pedigree at the running back and wide receiver position impacted fantasy football scoring. And if it was predictive, I, I know I am a clown. But anyway, um, I found from that report that doesn't really matter. To be honest, at the wide receiver position, high school pedigree doesn't matter at all. You have guys like Justin Jefferson that were three-star players that go on to be the best wide receiver in the NFL. It's almost something that we can completely ignore. But what do we usually need to see from a player that doesn't have the pedigree and goes to a very small school? Maybe you look at a Cooper Cup, for instance. What we need to see from those guys is we need to see dominance, not only their final season in college, because it's a very common thing for a player that doesn't really have pedigree, that's not an elite level athlete, to go to a small program, to stay all four years, and then his final season there to blow up and account for 50% of his team's receiving yards on a per game basis, just because he's a 22, 23 year old man playing against 18 year old future car salesmen, and it's not fair. So we need to see dominance at an early age and continue dominance throughout their entire career. Zay Flowers, we really didn't get that. I mean, his freshman year goes out there as 26 receiving yards per game, which sounds laughably bad. The Boston College was a horrible passing offense. He actually accounted for about 15% of this team's receiving production on a per game basis. Not bad, to be honest. His sophomore year, this one, we had the big blow. His sophomore year, he goes out there, 81 receiving yards on a per game basis. That's good for about 28.5% of his team's market share. So that's very impressive. For a sophomore player to go out there and have almost a 30% market share number, we really like to see that. But I do want to give you some context for this because we know Zay Flowers, he's surrounded by three-star guys. I mean, really nobody he's playing with is going to be a future NFL star at the wide receiver position. So let's look at the context of his dominance compared to other wide receivers in this draft class. So as sophomores, Zay Flowers with 28.5% of the passing offense at Boston College compares to Josh Downs, who had 40% at UNC. Compares to Jordan Addison, who had 33% at Pitt. Who compares to Quinton Johnston, who has 33% at TCU. Who compares to Jackson Smith and Jigba, who has 32% at Ohio State. All as sophomores, okay? I just want to give you this context in saying that Zay Flowers and why in my mind he's not the wide receiver one in this class and I don't really consider him inside the top tier is being outproduced by other wide receivers at the same age playing in much better programs which with much tougher competition. Like for instance, you're looking at Jordan Addison going up against a bunch of four-star guys and averaging 113 receiving yards per game. 
You're looking at Jackson Smith and Jigba going up against Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave and having a higher percentage of his offense than Zay Flowers has of his where he's going up against nobody. Okay, so we're keeping that in context. To be fair to Zay Flowers, he continuously improves. Almost every other one of those wide receivers got worse from their sophomore to junior season, where Zay Flowers goes out there and instead, I mean, actually has 33% of his team's offense his junior season, which is in a continued improvement. That's about where all those other wide receivers were as sophomores, but then his senior year, continues to get better, has 89 receiving yards per game, which is good for about 36% of his team's receiving production on a per game basis and slightly over 50% of their team's receiving touchdowns on a per game basis. So Zay Flowers did have a great senior season, but at the same time, Zay Flowers was 22 years old at Boston College. We assume he's going to have a great senior season. What I kind of want to see is John Dotson. I kind of want to see 45% of your team's passing offense your senior season. Remember, I love John Dotson last year because he dominated with over a 40% market share number his junior and senior seasons at Penn State. But people told me I was an idiot for liking Jahan Dotson. People told me I was an idiot for liking Christian Watson because they stayed all four years. And yes, it's not a good thing to stay all four years. But there's a big difference between staying all four years and demonstrating dominance to an extreme measure versus kind of having the same sophomore season as uh, Quinton Johnston when you're a senior at Boston College. I mean, if we're going to be looking at the level of competition he's going up against, there's a running back on the roster or a wide receiver that was a running back prospect coming out of high school that was a four-star guy, but can we count him? Not really. And there was a four-star tight end that's kind of impressive, but outside of that, there's nobody at the wide receiver position to compete with. And like we said, I, I mean, I just think it's so hard to have him ahead of someone like JSN, Quentin Johnston, Jordan Addison. I'm going to have Z Flowers most likely as my wide receiver four. I am going to have him ahead of Josh Downs, even though Josh Downs is a better production profile. A big reason for this is Zay Flowers should be around one draft pick. I mean, like I told you already, people that are way smarter than I am are saying that Zay Flowers is the wide receiver one in this draft class. And if we're going to be looking at NFL mock dra draft database, he's already been moving up draft boards where right now they do have him as that first round pick. And if I'm trying to find a good landing spot in my mind for Zay Flowers, like if we're going through, obviously he's not going to be a top 10 NFL draft pick. I think the earliest you could end up seeing Zay Flowers go, he probably doesn't go this early, but if we're playing the what if game, could end up going to the Houston Texans pick 12. Really wouldn't love that situation, even if they end up getting Bryce Young at two. You could end up seeing New England at 14. I think that's a big thing that people are going to be looking for. Are the New England Patriots and what they are going to do to address the wide receiver position? Of course, New England desperately needs a wide receiver. They really need to surround Mac Jones with talent now that they have a real offensive coordinator. I think this will be a much better offense this next season, especially if they can get an additional weapon in here. I think it would be a great landing spot for Zay Flowers because he would have a massive check mark in the draft capital category, and he'd be the number one wide receiver the second that he stepped into that locker room. I mean, Green Bay 15 doesn't really matter. Washington not happening. Pitt not happening. Detroit not happening. I think the next spot that is kind of realistic would be the Los Angeles Chargers at 22. I mean, I think that'd be a phenomenal landing spot. You get Zay Flowers going to the Chargers where, in my mind, Zay Flowers can almost play any wide receiver position you're going to throw at him. You move on from Keenan Allen to save some money there. I mean, Baltimore 23 would make a lot of sense from an NFL standpoint, but from a fantasy standpoint, obviously you're not wanting any wide receiver with the Baltimore Ravens. If you were to fall past, then you could end up looking at the New York Giants 26. I think that would be a great landing spot, very similar to the New England Patriots. He'd be the number one wide receiver the second that he stepped in that locker room I mean I wouldn't be too too surprised if the Dallas Cowboys decided you know what yeah we really missed Amari Cooper this past season let's make a play there maybe the Buffalo Bills decide that the Gabriel Davis experiment did not work and they should go ahead and invest into Zay Flowers there I mean, maybe, just maybe, the New Orleans Saints look to take him at the end of the first, or if somehow he falls to pick 32, KC would be an obnoxiously good landing spot. So I think it does make sense to put Zay Flowers to the wide receiver four in this draft class, which is where we previously had him. Even if on paper, the production profile makes a little bit more sense for a guy like Josh Downs, 
I think Flowers is going to be the better athlete at the NFL Combine. I think he's going to get the better NFL draft capital. I think he will be around one pick. It's just very difficult for me to put him ahead of someone like JSN, Quinton Johnston, Jordan Addison, who just have much better programs. We're much better players of the same age as sophomores. So I'm going to have those other guys in that tier one, Zay Flowers in tier two. But let me know what you're thinking. Please go down there, drop a like on this video, subscribe if you play Dynasty. And of course, if you want to get into a draft with us, link in the comment section, link in the description, go sign up for Underdog, use promo code FLOCK, and they'll match your first deposit dollar for dollar up 200. I think that's all I got for you. I really do appreciate you. I really hope you have a great day, and I really hope I get to see you in the video tomorrow.